Hi everyone, I am going to show you how to set up the Onion Omega for Python development, optionally using PyCharm IDE to do the, the development and then deploy over to the Omega. Alright, so the first thing um, that, um, that I want to explain is I assume you have the um, Omega board and the expansion dock and that's hooked up to your computer with a USB cable and it's at least you've powered it up but you haven't done anything else. Alright, so I'm going to bring up a web browser and one thing I want you to notice is when you plug in the Omega it, it actually acts as an access point and the best way to get started there are actually two ways to get started one is with the terminal and one is with um, the Omega console application so I'm going to show you both but I'm going to start with the console application but what I'd like to do is start um, at least a uh, serial terminal so I can at least see what's going on behind the scenes, even though we're not going to do much with that right now. All right, and there's the Omega. <clears throat> All right, so we're just going to keep an eye on that one. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do once you've started that up, um, and I've started this up many times, and I actually just did a factory reset, so I'm starting all over. But uh, what you want to do is head over to the Omega dash, and that's going to be some number, and your number is going to be different. But you need to remember this number because it's also part of a URL. So there's no login for this access point. You just go ahead and um, select that. And that logs me in. Now, now this is Omega-1828. So now if you head over to your browser, and by the way, Chrome is the only one that works um, all the time. Uh, Firefox works most of the time, and Safari has never worked for me. So if you say HTTP uh, Omega-1828 dash 1a28 dot local <clears throat> that will send you over to the console application and just one more time I am I did log into at least connected to the Omega access point and so this is root and the password is onion near onion e e r that's the default uh, username and password Okay, so once you log in, you should see something like this. And the first thing you're going to want to do is get set up on your Wi-Fi network. So go to the settings. Um, you can go to the Wi-Fi settings and set that up. Uh, one quick note, something I'm not going to actually show you how to do, but you might want to consider it, is since that access point is unsecured at this point, you might also want to come into the Wi-Fi AP settings and set um, some security, a password, and whatnot. Maybe change the sit out. <clears throat> All right, so for this one, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, actually, yeah, let's do that. Let me just come back over to the terminal application really quick, even though I have a terminal running over there. So that'll be root and onion air. All right, just so we have a terminal going. Okay, let's go set the Wi-Fi. I also found that it didn't really work. It's never connected to my 5G network. It's only ever connected to the 2.4. All right, so I typed in my Wi-Fi SID and pass. Oh, not none. Wi-Fi SID and password. And the reason I have this terminal window open is just because the feedback that you get on the console is very limited. So I like to see what was going on. And another note while all this is happening is um, if you have Mac OS and you have the El Capitan uh, latest release, um, Apple has made it uh, more difficult to connect via USB to some of these development boards. And so I found that the application called Serial helped fix all those problems. So I can now still connect with to my Raspberry Pi, um, to the Omega, uh, the, the Photon, and uh, Arduinos. So you might want to consider that. So again, so this doesn't really tell you that you're connected. Uh, so I'm going to go back over to my settings. So I want to try to do everything out of the browser. I shouldn't need that. So come back over here. And if I just do a ping on google.com, I can see, okay, great. Um, set to go. At least I'm. Looks like the uh, the Wi-Fi is back up and running. So the next thing you're going to want to try to do is go back over to settings. And depending on 
um, when you got your um, Omega, you probably want to go ahead and do an upgrade. I happen to know this is this is um, the latest one right now, but what you do is um, go ahead and hit upgrade, which um, I'll do so you can see what happens here. Um, it takes it says be, pa be patient. It might take a little while. It actually does take a little while, and you get very little feedback <clears throat> when it's actually done. Another reason why I have the serial port open. You can still go over to, to the uh, terminal window and see, but it, it t it's taking a little while for it to download what it needs to download and do the update. Let's go back over to settings. You'll see it still shows that. So I'll edit most of this downtime out. But when this actually does finish, um, console will refresh and you need to log back in. <clears throat> and we'll also be on our regular network at that point. During the upgrade, it'll reboot, um, kick us off, the host access for um, the Omega and put us back on our network. And while you're doing this, the thing that you should probably be looking at is the LED that's on the um, Omega. <clears throat> It'll flash. Actually, it stays lit for a really long time while it's doing this process. Then it goes through a flash. Then it'll stop flashing. That's generally when it's done with the upgrade. Okay, so notice that the serial window is showing basically the reboot and the LED is flashing <clears throat> on the Omega board but you get no feedback on the console application so without something like this running I'm not even sure how you would know where you're you're at even this isn't showing anything because you're not logged in yet it's rebooting so it's just something to keep in mind it is going to take a while and you won't get any feedback right now during this process the LED is flashing on the Omega Oh, and also notice um, it actually put me back to my original network because it kicked me out during the reboot, obviously. <clears throat> All right, I typically find when you, when you see this part of the screen, um, it's generally done. So there we go. So I've um, gone through the reboot. It's actually reconnecting with my uh, Wi-Fi, and then boom, there you go. Now it's back to the login screen. All right, so let's go ahead and re-log back in. And it's still on your near because we didn't change it. Well, depending on how you want, how secure you want to be, you might want to do that. Okay, so now that we're back here, what we're going to do is get it set up for um, to, for doing some Python programs. All right, so let's go over to the terminal. Nice. All right, so let's start doing, what if I do a refresh? All right, do a refresh. There we go. All right, so the first thing that I like to do is, um, let me just, since it really is a, it's a small board with a limited amount of memory, if I do a, a DF command to show uh, what the disk usage is, really all you have to play with is the root FS. Um, so you see it's got 9,300 9, 1K blocks, 5% used. And uh, I'm going to, let me see, the first thing I'm going to do is an O package update. <clears throat> Just so we get all the latest packages that are on there. And you, you keep in mind that the, the Linux operating system that's running there is a very limited, very lightweight um, operating system. So now let's go ahead and take a look. Um, Great, nothing's really changed. So the first thing we're going to do is install Python Lite. Now you could install the entire Python application, uh, the package, but it takes up way too much room. And so the recommendation is to install uh, the Python Lite. And my experience has been that's what you want to install, otherwise you're going to consume a lot of space. And the application that I want to show you is one that uses the URL lib2 uh, module so that we can just ping a web service and get a response back. And I would like to show you doing that through uh, PyCharm and show you how to deploy uh, through PyCharm. 
All right, that one's done. Um, and now this version of Python Lite is so light, it actually doesn't even include the logging um, module, which you need for the URL, URL lib 2. So we go to, let's go ahead, and, uh, go ahead and install that. All right, once that's done, the other two that you're going to need are the OpenSSL. And to actually connect with um, PyCharm, you're going to need SFTP. Okay, so now let's take a look at our disk usage. All right, so now we're all the way up to 33%. So we started at 5, and then we added just the light version of Python, some logging, some SSL, an SF SFTP server, and we're already at 33% um, usage. So you can see it's going to add up very fast. But uh, let's go ahead and um, write a little, at least a simple program. All right, let's do, uh, let's make... Make directory slash home omega. So we have some place to put it. All right, nothing there yet. Let me get the pie charm. All right, now here's the here's the program we're going to run. So it's actually very simple. All it does is um, hits this uh, URL from uh, Maki.io, which is a web service that lets you mock um, you know, web requests. So I have one there that I can hit, and it'll just return me a, a JSON payload. And so let me go ahead and run it here. You can see there you go. I got um, this is the payload that it returns. A status success returns me a couple users, and that's it. So what I like to do is is develop this in PyCharm so I can debug it and do what I need to see. You know, use a real IDE to make the actual application work and then I'll um, deploy it over to the Omega. So to do that, we go over to the Tools menu, Deployment, Configuration. And I'll just go ahead and create a new one here. Let's call this one Omega and we're going to use SFTP. And one thing I'm going to need is the IP address. And there's many ways to do that, but since you have a terminal window open, you can do an uh, IF config. And I can see I'm at 192.168.124. So that's going to be the FTP host, 192.168.1.24. In this case, the user, since I haven't created anything new and I haven't changed anything, it's going to be root and onion ear. And the root path, uh, we can go ahead and leave that at slash, but I want you to deploy to slash home slash omega. Now let's go ahead and test that. This is just telling me I've, I've done this once already and the identity has changed, so I still want to accept it. And the answer is yes. And it says successful. Okay. So now I have this program simple. And I want to get this actually down to the Omega so I can run it there. In, in PyCharm, once you've set up that deployment, you can go ahead and right-click and select the Upload To. And there's going to be a number of different options here, but it knows I just created this Omega, so I'd like to select the Omega. It's going to log into uh, the Omega at that IP address and, and download the source code where I asked it to, to download to. So let's go ahead and take a look. And there it is on the Omega. So now let's go ahead and run it from here. So Python requests test it'll hit the exact same endpoint obviously and return the exact same data and you can see it takes a little bit longer ah and there you go all right so that's how you get started with setting up the omega accessing it through its host access point uh, setting up the wi-fi uh, doing an upgrade and writing that first program via PyCharm in my case, but you could have done it with Nano here too. Um, nano request, you can write every, oh, sorry, not Nano, VI. 
So you, um, you can use a VI editor and create your own um, program right here too. So that's how you get started. Hope that was helpful.